If there's one part of gaming history that I think will be remembered the longest, it's the idea of the console wars. The fact that many of us like to pretend that Sega and Nintendo were constantly trying to tear each other apart, or in the modern day that Sony and Microsoft are trying to compete at the absolute best games, the best consoles, or maybe at least the very best commercials, that way they can get the slight edge in this market. Well, what's kind of interesting to me is that this idea of the console war and this hyper-competitive nature has actually made the jump over to PC gaming with the recent rise of the Epic Game Store, something that, in my opinion, has created a situation that is an absolute dumpster fire. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and today I want to talk about this because I find the entire situation very, very interesting because, to, in my opinion, it's actually going to have effects that could be seen for years and years to come. Now, let me just start off with a little bit of a confession. Those who have been subscribed for a while know that I am primarily a console gamer. I, I just think that it's easier to be able to put a game in there, it automatically installs updates, I don't have to worry about drivers, so for the most part, that's what I do. I play on Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and of course my PlayStation 4. But I do not hate PC gaming. In fact, I actually have a pretty powerful PC and play stuff like MMOs on it, uh, well, pretty much every week. So what's going on here is very, very fascinating to me because the Epic Game Store is trying to basically force themselves into a market. Until just a couple years ago, basically the only way you could very easily access PC gaming was through Steam. Now this is obviously just a little storefront. Steam is a launcher that allows you to log in and basically purchase games from literally hundreds of thousands of different companies. Tiny indie studios, really big stuff. I mean, really you can get everything from little experimental RPGs all the way up to Grand Theft Auto V. But what's really here important is that Steam has almost become ubiquitous. It's kind of just the default at this point, and it's something that people have gotten used to. And and so because of this, Steam has tried to do their best, in my opinion, to be ultra, ultra accessible. Steam, even if you don't particularly like it, they've tried to make themselves have a lot of different options and functionality to make people happy. Whereas the Epic Game Store, in my opinion, is trying a different route in that they're basically just trying to buy success. Now, they've only popped up in the last couple years, and so their launcher is much more primitive. It doesn't have a lot of features in it, and the biggest thing is that obviously Epic is the owners and creators of Fortnite and so because of it they have well probably 20 billion dollars of play money right now and so to try and get more money in the future they've started to spend that spare cash to purchase exclusivity rights. Basically before a game comes out that has a lot of hype around it they're saying hey put that on Epic Store and we'll pay you a couple million up front. Now this is just an estimated amount but it sounds like a lot of times when it comes to stuff like Metro Exodus or now Borderlands 3, they're approaching them and saying, hey, if you do not put that on Steam and instead sell that on our store, we'll pay you an upfront price and also we'll give you a better cut. Now here's the thing, people are enraged by this and in fact are trying to do any sort of backlash they can to send a message to these developers that they do not want this, that the Epic Game Store is actually a downgrade and so I've tried to figure out why. I actually installed the Epic Game Store and spent the last couple days tinkering with it to see what exactly this mess is all about and I can say that very easily the Epic Launcher sucks. So the biggest thing about it that really kind of blew me away is that it just has so many less features. It doesn't have the ability to easily take screenshots. It doesn't have the ability to just easily uh, have achievements. Uh, it does weird things like regional pricing. So really what's kind of smart about Steam, in my opinion, is the fact that they use basically one price point, for the most part, as far as I can tell. So if you're buying Final Fantasy 13 on Steam, which you shouldn't do, I don't like that game, if you were doing that, you would just be paying the price that the retail people have set. Whereas if you're playing, paying for a game like that in a different country, 
that might make it cheaper. Like in Australia, almost every game is 80 to $100. Uh, if you're buying it through Steam, it's going to be 60 bucks. If you're buying that game through the Epic Store, it's going to be 80 to $100. There's also all sorts of processing fees and stuff that exist in the Epic Store that don't exist anywhere else that you pay. So it basically makes it where the developers are getting a bigger cut to the profits, but you as the gamer are also paying a lot more just because it's this different storefront. Now, the thing that I'm actually the most annoyed about when it comes to the Epic Store is that the Epic Store does not have reviews at all right now. In, in my opinion, this is a huge, huge detriment. I think that reviews, especially on stuff like Steam or uh, even on the PlayStation Store, are very, very vital. They give you a way to very clearly and very directly provide information to other consumers. It's not just about writing a funny meme, it's just about useful stuff. Like, seriously, today I actually found this review, I'm gonna blow this up a little bit so you can read it, this is from an older lady who got super, super hooked on Monster Hunter World. In my opinion, this is an incredibly useful review on Steam. It's basically saying, hey, look, this is the people that'll enjoy this product, and also in my opinion, it gives you some very detailed information that normally you would not have had access to. Now these features may start popping up later on when it comes to the Epic Game Store, but it's one of those things that's sort of just down the line. I guess my biggest issue when it comes to the Epic Game Store and what seems to be annoying people the most is the fact that they are forcing exclusivity. So right now, Epic Games Launcher isn't doing anything special. They are not the best shop in the game. They are straight up just the richest people in the business right now. So because of it, they are approaching all these different developers and just paying to win. I mean, it's hard to really phrase it any other way. They're walking in and saying, hey, put that over here and you get more cash. Now, something that to me is kind of irksome about this is just the fact that I feel like the Epic Games launcher is a step down and they're forcing people to participate in it. So obviously, as a console gamer, I play on several different stuff at once. And so one thing that's interesting to me is when I go back and play something like a PlayStation 3 game, the store on the PS3 is awful. It takes about 25 seconds to boot up. Every time you're trying to scroll through the menus, it needs to load trailers. So just purchasing something through my PlayStation 3 digitally can sometimes take 20 minutes, which in my opinion is far too long. Whereas if I'm doing something on my PlayStation 4, it can take sometimes a matter of seconds. I mean, seriously, when you ever want you just press the PlayStation button, it takes you to the home screen, you can click store, and it'll just start saying, hey, do you want to buy Red Dead Redemption 2? Or, hey, do you want to buy Judgment? It is so smooth, it is so fluid. So in this way, to make an analogy, it does feel like uh, Epic Games almost feels like you're going back to the PlayStation 3 store after having the PlayStation 4 store. They are paying you to downgrade the experience. They are literally just trying to buy their way to the big leagues by just going in there and throwing around cash until they can get all the games that force you to participate in it. Now the biggest thing about the Epic Game Store, and the thing I've been putting off the most, because it's the most complicated to try and explain, is the fact that the Epic Game Store actually has very, very low security standards. Alright, so everybody get ready, we're gonna have to get geeky here for a second. Typically, if you're running any sort of launcher or any sort of storefront, you need to make sure that your security protocols are ultra, ultra high. This basically makes you, of course, unhackable and also what's called unscrapable. Basically, a lot of times if you program your storefront badly, there will be a lot of information that's very, very visible to certain hacking programs. I mean, they can seriously just do stuff like steal your credit card information, steal your home address, or sometimes people even just just to be able to scoop your password and get everything. And here's the issue, the Epic Game Store happens all the freaking time. I mean, seriously, just a couple weeks ago, they actually had, I think, 80 million accounts? What was it? Yeah, 80 million accounts had their data stolen. 80 million. 80 million. 80 million people 
had their information stolen through the Epic Game Store simply because their security is so bad. I mean, anybody who's ever had an Epic Games account knows that you're constantly getting almost hacked because everybody almost every week gets a freaking email that says, oh, there were a series of failed logins on your account. I mean, these people are constantly trying to hack your account every single day and they just don't have the security to actually protect that. It means that even if you happen to enjoy the Epic Game Store, even if you happen to end up buying a bunch of games that you think are great and you're playing them with friends, at any moment it may get hacked. So right now I am personally super, super excited for Borderlands 3. Honestly, I am so beyond hyped for that game, it looks like exactly what I want. But I am not in any way going to ever purchase it on the Epic Game Store. I will not support it. I refuse to give my money to a process that in my opinion is vastly inferior than the competition. Steam is good, even when Steam has problems, and trust me, Steam does have a lot of problems, it's still just a lesser product for a different cost. Look, Steam is there to try and give you more accessibility. Steam is there to give you controller support. Steam gives you things like easier modding toolkits are often put into the launcher. It is better in every single way. And if people are going to try and buy their way only onto the Epic Games storefront, I'd rather support them on console. I am willing to spend my money to support good art, but I don't want Epic Games getting that cash. I would prefer that the developers get the most slice that they can. I will buy games on PS4, on Xbox One, and I'll oftentimes I'll even buy games a second time on Nintendo Switch, but I will not participate in Epic Games Store ever. But these have just been my thoughts that are kind of off the cuff and a little bit raw here. What do you think of it? Are you a PC gamer? And do you think this stuff is as aggravating as PC gamers are sort of making it out to be? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Oh man, so you can see when I say that I buy games multiple times on Switch, I'm not joking. Look, I, I, I have uh, Final Fantasy VII in here. I'm still playing Final Fantasy VII on Switch for like the 80th time and I have no regrets. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.